everyone. Welcome to my garden and welcome to my bottle palm. Beautiful palm. Bought quite a few bottle palms. I bought them home in my car and they were in the medium sized pot. Medium to large so quite a slow growing palm particularly in this climate. So if you live up in the tropicals, tropical climate you know they grow a lot quicker but unfortunately it's just the summertime they sort of grow and they slow down a little bit here. Um, during the other time, winter time. But a beautiful palm. Now I have uh, let some Blanchettianas go and I have a beautiful plant that I planted a long time ago and it has a sort of bulb thing and I was always thought it was a, a blood lily. Um, and it's just recently flowered. It's got another flower about to open out which we'll check out. And also the hail. The hail has um, come into this area, but unfortunately um, the, the blood lily was, was not out until after the hail storm. So um, I'm not sure that it is a blood lily. You know, when you buy something and it, you're not too sure if it is a blood lily or not. So um, I'll keep you posted about that one. It's very beautiful, whatever it is. So another new brom type down here, Orthophytum. I think this one is just the stardust, and yeah, it's copped a bit of hail. But it's a great plant. You can see it just um, spills out over your rockeries. Look, there it goes, trying to um, set itself into the lawn. And yeah, just a really nice plant to have in your front row. It is a little bit prickly, um, and it doesn't doesn't look as prickly as perhaps what it is. And I think these particular prickles, they can. Um, sometimes come off while they're prickling you. Now what else? Over here beautiful Alcantaria. I'm going to say Alcantaria but keep saying Alcantaria so I'm going to um, stop that naughty habit and use the correct pronunciation which is Alcantaria. Now copped a bit of hail unfortunately was looking spectacular but uh, losing a bit of light. A um, bit, bit too shady here. So where we are, it's not that the bottle palm, it's not the bottle palm, it's because of the jacaranda. So you remember I showed you the big jacaranda and the chocolate bamboo and uh, pygmy date palm and there was a cycad and ponytail, those ponytail plants. And anyway, back to the bottle palm. Uh, this Alcantaria. It was actually, I bought it as a Hawaiian and it did have a little bit of variegation in it when I brought it home and it wasn't completely variegated stable, it just, um, it was called a Hawaiian one anyway, you know when you go to one of those plant places or a market or something and you pick it up and you're not too sure, so I did buy the Hawaiian and it did actually have a lot more variegation but this year unfortunately um, the jacarandas finally covered it it's probably the first year these branches of see it's just that one new branch stretching out whereas last year that has been in full sun and a little bit of shade so perhaps you know I'm not too sure um, whether it was the light that's caused it to um, lose some of its variegation and who knows it might come back and maybe it will throw a beautiful grass grass pup is what we call them so over here, another plant, Reuben. We all know Reubens. So that's what I wanted to say. Um, yeah, you'll see this a lot in my garden. <laughs> and um, Pectinata, beautiful one. Not flowering at the moment, so I'll love to show you that when it's flowering. For sure, beautiful little one in here. It's uh, not a little one, it's a beautiful big neon. And it gets uh, pinky purple with white flecks. Really pretty, and as I said, these were looking so fabulous and the week before Christmas we had um, you know a five to ten minute hailstorm. So beautiful breeze in there we all might know red chestnut and the one at the front is a variegated acnea cordata or forget me not and I use those a lot in my garden. So I'm about to uh, remove these Blanchettianas um, I just think some smaller bromeliads would just look beautiful and um, otherwise they'll just end up on top of my uh, beautiful Alcantaria and uh, the blood lily and so on. Over here I've got a beautiful Hohenbergia 
and it's stretching for light. So initially this area was complete sun, but um, yeah, the, the tree, the jacaranda, so I did bring that home in a quite a small pot or just the small to medium sized pot and it's, yeah, it's really big now, as you can see. So beautiful area. So what I'm thinking is together we're going to create a beautiful area. This could actually be beautiful once the uh, Blanchetti Arnas are gone. We could even uh, retire some mothers in here. So that's what I want to show you is up here, up here underneath the jacaranda tree, there's just a lot of bromeliads in there. And while it looks like you've, um, you know, carefully landscaped them, um, I would just recommend quite often retiring your mothers because quite often um, you retire them all, they're not looking so good and then within a couple of years you've just got a beautiful new area full of life, you know, there's um, plenty of pups and things going on and it doesn't actually look like a retirement area, it ends up looking like you actually created a beautiful landscaped area. Um, so we'll go up in there because it's really really nice very special uh, so yeah don't forget the orthophytum um, great plant really really hardy takes full sun so I think that might be where this one's off to this year as I said this was full sun last year and it's this is the first year that the shade has come across but still gets morning sun and so on so uh, beautiful place to create some roms which we'll do together in the future and I'll show you how best to do that and uh, I'll possibly move some of these plants that are um, stretching for more light. And I think uh, once we remove the Blanchettianas, and I will repurpose the Blanchettianas, I'll reuse them somewhere else. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, every time I pull something out, I, I just move, move it somewhere else. So stay tuned for this. And bottle palm, beautiful palm, um, beautiful palm. Uh, really, really nice, and you'll be seeing more bottle palms. I've got quite a, quite a few. So thank you, everybody. So hello, everyone. I set off a phytum star dust in its starlight. <laughs> I just want to show you when it gets more sun, it's, it goes a really beautiful colour. So um, both starlights there, and one's quite a sort of dark burgundy maroon colour, and it gets a lot more um, pinky red. So that is um, Orthophytum Starlight, uh, not Stardust. Thank you. So hello everyone, I'm just showing you another one of my bottle palms. This one's a great example because, um, you know, there's, uh, the trunk is all exposed and I just love their beautiful trunks and you can see that it's just getting a beautiful bottle shape um, and a beautiful plant. And as I said, I can't quite believe I brought these home in my car. As I said, they weren't small pots, they were quite big to medium, but yeah, I've had these over 15 years, I'd say, so beautiful, beautiful palms, and um, yes, bottle palm, great, pa uh, great palm for growing bromeliad, some of the sun-loving ones, um, you know, it might not provide a lot of shade in the first few years, but eventually it will, and so most of the bromeliad I grow around my bottle palms are most of the sun, sun varieties. I've got an Alcantaria up there, which we'll go, in, we'll go in this garden and have a little bit more look. I just particularly wanted you to see some of the beautiful bottle palms and just how nice they are. And I do envy the people that live in the tropical climate because they uh, grow a lot bigger and faster. So yes, thanks again. So I just wanted to tell you all that I've just recently dug out a plant where that big that big area you can see there uh, was where I was growing a type of bromeliad, a new one, a, a new type I should say, not a new bromeliad, but a new type um, to my segments, which was a Pitcania. Pitcania. Um, and a beautiful plant, uh, Pitcania flamia. So I've recently moved that just so that I can get in here and um, remove the Blanchettianas and everything else. So I will show you the clump. It's not flowering of my beautiful Pitcania. And I would certainly like to show you when it's flowering. It looks lovely and it's also 
it's still recovering from being moved. So it's a really big clump and I'll show you that now. So hello everyone, those dead flower, big dead flowers you can see, uh, they're flamier. It's looking a bit dry um, and it's just a really big clump of Pitcania, uh, Pitcania and it's a flamia. And as you can see, it's finished flowering. So we'll come back and have a look at that one when it's flowering and, and I might give it a, a good drink of water. Mm. 